The autumn wind is a pirate, blustering in from sea. With a rollicking song, he sweeps along, swaggering boisterously. His face is weather-beaten. He wears a hooded sash, with a silver hat about his head, and a bristling black mustache. He growls as he storms the country, a villain big and bold. And the trees all shake and quiver and quake as he robs them of their gold. The autumn wind is a raider, pillaging just for fun. He'll knock you round and upside down and laugh when he's conquered and won. Great news, Raider Nation. Gus Bradley is now the defensive coordinator of the Las Vegas Raiders. Bradley is the creator of the Seattle Seahawks Legion of Boone defense that finished number 7 in points in 2011 and number 1 in 2012. Then after a failed head coaching gig in Jacksonville from 2013 to 2016, he took a number 29 Los Angeles Chargers defense up to number 3 in 2017. Then a few years later in 2020, the Chargers defense had a lot of injuries and finished number 23 in points at 26.6 points per game. The Raiders would have taken that as they gave up 29.9 points per game. The offense scored 27.1 points per game in 2020, so they don't need the best defense to contend. Schematically, Bradley runs a 4-3 under defense that functions like and often turns into a 3-4. And in the secondary, he runs that cover 1, cover 3 press bail. So could he do that with the Raiders personnel? Of course, the Raiders have free agency in the draft coming up, but Bradley actually could run his defense with the personnel the Raiders have now. First, we look at the Leo or Elephant position where 2017 first round pick Tack McKinley played in Atlanta. And his main problem there was staying healthy. But when healthy, he played the Leo position well. Those almost 35 inch long arms came in handy right there. But that arm length makes him hard to block. Here he's standing up and that's easy work. Now he has his hand in the dirt. You know this tight end has no chance. Those long arms are freakish for somebody that's just 6'2 and 265 pounds. Oh, and you want to talk freakish? How about it's 4540 speed? Mix that with his bend, and he's going to get to the quarterback. You look at the size, speed, and bend, and you wonder why he hasn't averaged at least 10 sacks a year. Oh, and did I mention that he has power too? He has that boy on skates right there. Here's another display of power where he knocks him to his knees. And how about this one? Oh, he's going to be battling Max Crosby for the Leo spot. Remember 6'7", 290 pounder David Irving? Well, he can be that 3 technique slash 5 technique a la DeForest Buckner. He uses that speed and quickness of his to penetrate in the run game. And those extra long arms help him rush the passer like with this push-pull move. And of course the 6-7, he's going to bat a lot of balls down. And other times, he's just going to dominate the man in front of him. Here comes the push-pull again, but you can't stop it with his arm length. No, unfortunately, when he came to the Raiders this year, he was only able to play in a couple of games. 
stupid. He looked like the same guy throwing blockers off him in the run game. And taking on the blocker and the running back at the same time. He can still push his man back into the quarterback. And he hasn't shrunk, so at 6'7", he's still going to get his hand on a lot of footballs. And he has excellent bursts to come around the corner on that stunt. He's going to show some serious speed chasing down Patrick Mahomes here. But he's going to hurt his knee changing direction. He stays in the game, but he's not going to play anymore this season. Now we go to nose tackle, Jonathan Hankins, who's been a good one, soaking up blocks while some linebackers run to the ball. Here he takes on two blockers again, so Nick Wikowski can get to the ball. He's done a good job of keeping Wikowski clean to make tackles all year. But sometimes, two blockers just isn't enough to keep him off the ball carrier. He can even get down the line to make a play. And really? You think you're just gonna block him one on one? Pass rusher, he's, uh, but he'll give you a pressure every now and again. They obviously take nose tackles off the field for a reason on third down, but don't underestimate Hankins. Here he's gonna get a sack, which happens every silver and black moon. And here's another one. Hankins is a run stuffer but that you can't underestimate rushing the passer. At the base in would be Cleland Furl. He's tough against the run as he showed to save the game here. Furl is not one that stays blocked. Watch him take on this big tackle lined up at tight end and toss him to the side. This ain't right, right here. And here he goes right through first round pick Makai Becton to make the tackle. He's gonna go through Becton and his friend to make this tackle. Furl actually looked really good as a pass rusher this year. He had a ton of pressures, but not too many sacks. This one's going to get away from him, but he sets it up for somebody else to get. Furl didn't have a sack in this game, but he took over this game chasing Mahomes around. And here he sets up Max Crosby for the sack. Then here he's going to be Beckton for the sack. Now passing downs. Furl has the versatility to kick inside and still chase the quarterback around. There's nothing like that quick pressure right in the quarterback's face to make him throw errantly. We're starting to see Mayock and Gruden's vision for Furl as he's mastering tackle and end. He got hurt right when the sacks were starting to come. But we'll see him next year at multiple positions. Outside linebacker is a good idea for Vic Beasley. 
who was moved to the position in Atlanta when McKinley was drafted, and he looked right at home in the run game. You're not going to get outside of him as fast as he is. He can get you in the backfield with that speed and quickness too. And he can cover. That speed and athleticism give him a lot of options out there. And of course, rushing the passer is one of those options. Maybe the main one. Watch the speed and the bend here. Oh. And here he comes off the edge again, straight jacking for football. It would really be something to see Beasley in a full, loud stadium in Las Vegas. I don't think opposing tackles could react fast enough. Oh, and he's tied for the league lead in forced fumbles. Oh, that ball went flying. And it's a touchdown for his teammate. How about setting up a touchdown for himself? Beasley is a better fit at Sam for Bradley's system than Nick Moore, but we'll see. Now we're on to Nick Witkowski, who will be more of an inside backer like he was in Chicago. And the result is he came down the hill and made plays. That's the safety as he was strong against the run and rushing the passer from the inside on blitzes. And coverage was a very underrated part of his game. And when he came to the Raiders, he looked like the same guy. He was a tackling machine with 81 tackles in just 12 games. And he can cover too. I mean, boy, can he cover. Opposing running backs didn't get much on him this year. Now watch this. This is an amazing interception right here. Kwiatkowski is a big pillar in the middle of that Raider defense. Corey Littleton was the most fun I ever had doing a player evaluation on last year. The guy was just a playmaker and was all over the place. And you gotta love anyone that can make Mahomes pay for scrambling. Oh! Plus, he can cover the best of tight ends. And if you're not careful, he will get a turnover out of you. He can pick the ball off. Or he can punch it out and get a fumble out of you. But due to a knee injury and some confusion in the Raiders' defensive scheme, 
we didn't see the same guy. He missed tackles. And his coverage wasn't too tight. But against the Broncos in week 17, I saw some encouraging signs that he was getting it back. He was coming on down the hill and making plays again. Watch him blow this play up. Then he goes from coverage to the running quarterback again, and oh! As he comes in motion with this man here, Damon Arnett had some lessons to learn as a rookie early on. But he did show improvement throughout the season. But no matter what, he's better in press man coverage as he jams Tyreek Hill here. Here he is in press man again in week 17 against the Broncos and the receiver doesn't have a chance here. But he does need to learn that he can't be too handsy in there. He got away with one there. He'll be in press bell coverage again like he was at Ohio State. So there will be no confusion about what his responsibility is like there is on this play. Trayvon Mullen had his times of confusion as well. But when he lined up on his man in press coverage, he knew exactly what to do. Mullen was one of the best press coverage corners in the league last year. So that makes you wonder why former defensive coordinator Paul Gunther didn't put him in press man more often. Hopefully Bradley sees this and puts more press in his press bail. Cause Mullen could be a shutdown corner if put in press man more often. Now we're on the strong safety Jonathan Abram could play the run well in the box. He's a good blitzer that gets to the quarterback from there. And he can cover opposing tight ends. short zone and the scramble drill, he can pick the quarterback's pocket. But you don't want a one-on-one -on -one with T.Y. Hilton. Abram has made plenty of mistakes in his first year of actually playing, but he's going to be alright. This 26-yard catch here is the only catch over 20 yards Jeff Heath has allowed this year. He's been pretty reliable on the back end, and when you need him to take a man, he can do that as well. And if you don't look him off, he'll pick your pocket. You better throw accurately when throwing in this area because he'll get you. Again, you better look him off because he's lurking back there, waiting for you to make a mistake. The Raiders may draft the free safety, I don't know, but the defense could certainly function with Heath back there. 
Leading the charge up front next year will be defensive end and defensive tackle Cleveland Furl. That's what number four overalls are for. Leading level two, as well as the whole defense, will be middle linebacker Nick Kwiatkowski. The corner to watch next year will definitely be Mullen. And if he's there next year, the safety with the most turnovers will be Jeff Heath. More will be brought in this offseason, but there's enough in the cupboard for Bradley to get his defense started already. Thank you for watching. See you next time.